This program is made possible by Zoho Corporation. Hello and welcome. I'm Kamla. With me today are two engineers. The first one is Danielle Applestone. She is the CEO of a company called Other Machine, which is based in Berkeley. And the second is Vinod Dham, who is known as father of Pentium Chip, and he's an investor, engineer, inventor. In fact, the two of you share a lot in common. <laughs> so tell me, what is this machine that you have and why Vinod Dham should be interested in it? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a desktop milling machine. And what that means is you use a computer with a design file to control how this machine moves. And it uses a very sharp cutting tool to move through materials. So the opposite of a 3D printer, which adds layers, the milling machine cuts away layers. So you start with like a block of aluminum, you cut away layers with a sharp cutting tool, and then you're left behind with a prototype. And so it's, you actually, the thing comes here. You right. put the material here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put the cutting tool in there and the material is on the spoil board of the machine. And then you get a prototype in the same day. So, Vin, would a machine like this help you if you were uh, back in 79 at, I, uh, no, I, at I Intel? Wish, I wish I had met her then and she had this machine back in uh, <laughs> 80s and 90s when we were building these microprocessors because the moment the chip comes out, the silicon, you have to plug it on a, uh, what we call a motherboard or a card like this to test it. And many a times uh, you need to reconfigure the card because you really, everything is new. The chip is new, the card is new, things may not work, and you need to solder. And we used to do all funny things and sometimes wait for days and weeks to get a new card back. From what I'm hearing from her is that you can just put this thing in and it will create this pattern within 20 minutes and then she replicates the same thing on a soldering framework, shoulders them together, and you have the card. Now, for prototyping <laughs> businesses, I think this is fantastic. So it would have cut your uh, uh, lag period of introducing oh, yeah. a new chip. Yeah, we, we, we call it time to market and time to money. That is, you know, we want to get out there as quickly as we can because competition is beating down our neck. And time to money means we want to, we have invested hundreds of millions of dollars in building the chip, the sooner it gets to the market and we start collecting the money back as revenue, the sooner we can start doing the next thing. So I think she would have helped in both of those causes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think we see that both on the, the, the startup side and the larger company side. Both are trying to get products out there faster and also get prototype, pro pro like prototype products that are very functional but haven't been manufactured yet put those in the hands of customers before you even go to manufacturing so that you can see how people behave, refine the product, and then you're ready to manufacture. Yeah, you know, I think thousands. this is very impressive. I wasn't aware of it. I'm glad that I met you, and <laughs> I'm going to check more about this company. But uh, as I can see, everything evolves in Silicon Valley. I can see 10 years from now this thing being far more complex and far mm -hmm. more you know, uh, dense and doing a lot more functionality with the saving of time, which is very, very important. Remember. A lot of these things had to be sent offside, outside the company to be built because companies don't have capability of doing these type of activities. But if they can have few desktop machines like this sitting there, an engineer can go in and keep on changing it. Yeah. That's pretty remarkable. That's the dream. I think what's interesting about this machine is, is electrical engineers who are very familiar with circuit design have a tool on their desk that can also do mechanical design. So why would they be limited to just prototyping the electronics? They could start prototyping the enclosures or the heat sink components or things like that where that's, that's even farther from what they're used to doing. Yeah. No, I think, and especially, by the way, we talk about Internet of Things these days, you mm -hmm. know, depending on who you listen to, whether it's Chambers or someone else, they talk about 100 billion of those. These are Internet of Things, like a thermostat. She just talked to me out, offline. You can just prototype them right mm -hmm. in your home, sitting at your so home. So customize it. This is unheard of. Yeah, no, it, it, it's really true. I think that as, you know, just like the average person is now very familiar with de desktop publishing and writing online and even have blogging and things like that, I think the same thing is going to happen with 3D design software. That will get easier to use and then more people will have proficiency with it and then they're going to have all of these designs and no way to print them, but they need machines like this, very small machines. And this is only one of a huge array of desktop machines that are possible. So and I have a question for you. How much does this cost? 
Uh, this is $31.99. 30, that's not too bad. And when can I have one? <laughs> I mean, next week if you want. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you, you're already interested. My final question as a non-techie, the analogy that comes to mind is desktop computers versus mobile phones. Is this the mobile phone of our time? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's, it's creating a, a functionality, uh, like she said, in the desktop you have put the program in for printing whatever you want to print uh, in a card. And that program drives these little bits that she's plugging into that machine there to create all these types of patterns that you need, which are really the things that connect each other, these various components, and the soldering format that goes on top of it. So it can be used in a cell phone, it can be used in a desktop, it can be used, actually mm. she showed me some interesting uh, uh, figure that somebody had made just uh, from a two dimension to a three dimensional type of mm -hmm. uh, animal figure. So it can be done in many different ways, am I right? Mm -hmm. I think the, the analogy that I like to use is technologies that used to take up a room now fit on your desk. And this is the same. This is a very small version of an industrial tool that's been around for a really long time, since the 50s, in fact. Good point. Yes. Wait. Well, thank you so much. Thank and you. I can see you're very excited. And I can see you're very <laughs> yes. excited. So yes. thank you so much. And thank you. thank you for watching. We'll be back again with another show. If you missed any of it, you can catch them on our YouTube channel. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice you. Yes, nice to meet you. This program is made possible by Zoho Corporation.